Stephen Kinnock. Madam Deputy Speaker, it's a pleasure to uh, speak after so many engaging and insightful contributions uh, this evening. As we meet here today, it can be easy to forget that it's almost ten years since the Prime Minister, who was then Leader of the Opposition, decided it was time to hug a husky, and five years since declaring his determination to lead the greenest government ever. But as soon as the Prime Minister had walked down Downing Street, made his way through the Rose Garden, and once he was out of earshot of the Honourable Member for Sheffield Hallam, what did he do? He instructed his advisers to, and I quote, cut the green crap. I say this not to imply that the Prime Minister and his party were lacking in sincerity. Of course not. <laughs> no. I say it because it shows the undeniable truth that talking is easy, but action is hard. We see today that the government's failure to act to support the steel industry and jobs in my constituency, and we see it on climate change. Warm words won't stop global warming, only concrete action will. The connection between how we tackle climate change and how and where we get our energy is self-evident. It was for that reason that DEC was set up and why the Climate Change Act committed to reducing emissions by 80% by 2050. And alongside the Act was a detailed plan for how we would move to a low-carbon economy. But today, the Government are enthusiastically dismantling that, injecting as much uncertainty and instability into the energy sector as possible. When I worked at the World Economic Forum, I was privy to the thoughts of CEOs and leaders of some of the world's biggest companies. And I have to say, most of those people got it. They would simply tell me, look, our business is not sustainable if our planet is not sustainable. It's not just the case that business and the private sector could or should be partners in sustainability. The truth is that the business community desperately wants and needs to partner with government on green growth. Like me, they have seen the reports that unchecked climate change threatens at least $4.2 trillion of assets around the world. They know that a sustainable business needs a sustainable planet. I have seen the revolutionary capacity of, the private, of private sector actors in attaining public goals, but doing that requires support from government. And part of that government support must be about creating an environment of certainty. Business can only mobilise and invest its intellectual and financial capital in green energy if it can have some sense of certainty, if it can be sure that the floor will not be pulled up from underneath it overnight. And it's on this that the government is failing, and with this bill in particular. Already, the government has decided to effectively block the solar industry from any certainty over the feed-in tariffs they will receive once projects are finished. And now we see greater uncertainty being injected around the issue of carbon capture and storage and wind farms with the early closure of the renewable obligation. Onshore wind is one of the most cost-effective and low-carbon energy sources available to us in the UK. And so the government decision to retrospectively close down the exi existing subsidy scheme, something that was not contained in the Conservative manifesto, is an example of this government's reckless chopping and changing of energy policy. It should be particularly worrying for the following reasons. First, it will cost jobs. Hundreds of highly skilled workers will be laid off because of the government's mismanagement of clean energy subsidies. Second, the government claimed that ending solar and wind support will save households 80p on their annual bill, but most of those savings will be offset by handouts they have announced to more expensive energy projects like Hinkley Point B. The government's approach is inconsistent, on the one hand stripping away support for clean energy, for the cheapest energy we have, just when it is on the verge of reaching parity with non-renewables, while at the same time announcing new subsidies for the most expensive forms of energy. That is not about a fair market. It is about ideology. And third, all of this has been done with almost no notice, so it will totally wreck, wreck investor confidence. I have to ask the Secretary of State to put herself in the position of an investor in the energy market. Faced with the choice of investing in the UK or the US, where renewables investment has doubled under President Obama, where would she choose? Faced with the choice of investing in the UK or Germany, which has seen renewables rise from 6% of the energy sector in 2000 to almost a third of the sector by 2014, where would she choose? Does the Secretary of State really think... I will give way. Uh, for giving way. He mentions Germany. He's right. Renewables are more than they are in the UK. It's also a fact that in Germany, 
carbon emissions per capita are one third higher than in the UK and one third more per unit of GDP because of their reliance on coal. But does he not accept that the government has got a responsibility to decarbonise as cheaply as possible? There was a terrible announcement today in his own constituency where electricity prices are double, double for uh, strip products in Port, Port Talbot to the equivalent company in Germany. Does he not accept that part of what government must do is mitigate that? Uh, I absolutely accept that there has to be exemptions for the energy intensive industries. That's why uh, the steel industry has needed the energy intensive industry compensation package for over four years. The Chancellor recognised the need for that in 2011 and it's taken until now to get it sorted. And what, one of the reasons for that is because we're expending so much political capital in, in Europe trying to negotiate a Brexit. But that's, uh, that's another case altogether. Does the Secretary of State really think that investors are going to choose the UK, where you could be liable to see your governmental and regulatory support wiped away overnight with no warning? Or are you going to choose to invest in an environment of ever-increasing certainty? In fact, would you not consider investing in, in emerging markets such as China, which is now investing more in clean energy than the whole of Europe combined? Or India, which is planning a five-fold increase in its uh, clean energy investment by 2020? instead of putting your money into an uncertain British market. And we must be clear, this uncertainty will affect not only those renewable sectors explicitly covered by the changes, there will be contagion elsewhere from this assault on investor certainty. And, Madam Mr. Spe mm -hmm. Mr. Deputy Speaker, today of all days, I feel the need to talk about a specific example of where the government's failure to act decisively to support sustainable energy and create certainty for investors is costing our country dear. And that is the Swansea Bay Tidal Lagoon. Yeah, yeah. As honourable members will be aware, Tata Steel announced over 1,000 redundancies today, 750 of those being at, at the Port Talbot plant in my constituency. I will give way. Scarcely believe that I would hear such a clear example of sadomasochism. A men member who actually represents a steel mining industry calling for the highest cost energy in the Western world to go ahead, which can only make the problem of the jobs of his workers even worse. I just can't imagine how he stands any chance of getting re-elected. I, 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 I thank the Honourable <laughs> Member for his excellent advice. And, uh, I'll leave that, the last bit of that uh, intervention to my constituents to decide. Uh, but uh, what, what I would say is I explained to the Honourable Member opposite that there is a need for compensation package for energy intensive industries. I've just, uh, I, no, as I've mentioned in many, many times in interventions uh, and speeches on the steel industry, it's the government's foot dragging on the compensation package which is a major reason that we're seeing the crippling of the steel industry. It's been too little too late. This happened because of the government's failure to act against the dumping of, Chinese, of subsidised Chinese steel, the failure to produce a long-term industrial strategy for steel, and warm words backed up with no concrete action on procurement and energy. The priorities for my constituents are preventing further job losses and government action to support retraining and transitions for, made, for those made redundant. And in the Swansea Bay Tidal Lagoon project, there's an opportunity for both job creation and support to the steel industry because of the steel turbines that would be at the heart of the Lagoon project. But the government has dodged and delayed the decision. Every missed deadline sets the project back. Every day or week of delay costs months or years, and it costs jobs. Yeah. The Swansea Bay Tidal Lagoon would be the first of its kind in the world and shows how important it is for this government to act decisively and create certainty. My constituents urge the Secretary of State to take urgent and decisive action to support this project. We have been let down by this government too many times, today being a prime example. It is about time the government took action, so I would appreciate a specific answer from the Secretary of State about the Tidal Lagoon project in her wind-up. But it is not just with the Tidal Lagoon and the arbitrary scrapping of renewables obligations that the government is failing. The decision to act the CCS programme, just when Britain is on the brink of securing major investment from the private sector, puts the entire future of UK CCS at risk. CCS te technology not only offers the chance of decarbonisation, of transforming non-renewable energy into something that can be made part of a viable sustainable energy mix, it also supports jobs. But again we see a government that is unable to create an environment of certainty for investors, for employees and for our country. And so, our energy security is put at risk. 
as is the future of our planet. There can be no doubt about it. The government's actions are being noted around the world. While the Prime Minister will parade his signature of the Paris Accord, colleagues around the world as well as in this chamber see him slashing vital support for clean energy. The UK's reputation as a world leader on climate change is under threat, and we now face an uphill battle to meet our legally binding EU renewable energy targets. And so we should ask, what is the theme running through all of this? And I think it's of a government and a party driven by the politics of now. That's why in 2005 we saw Hugger Husky and in 2010 the pledge to be the greenest government ever. That's why we saw the ditching of the Green Deal when those pesky Liberal Democrats had left the Cabinet table. And that's why today we see an end to support for wind, solar and CCS. Because members on the other side have had too many complaints at their local association meetings. Because government ministers have been too preoccupied with expensive nuclear projects and cozying up to China because the government or Mr Linton Crosby didn't feel green issues and the environment were fashionable anymore, because the internal politics of the Conservative Party pushes them back again to their comfort ground and away from a commitment to a sustainable future. But the climate challenge cannot be met by the politics of now. It cannot be met by short-termist thinking and internal party management. The Conservative Party claimed to be the party of entrepreneurs, so I say it's about time they started like acting like it with an entrepreneurial state willing to collaborate, work with support of all of those in the private sector who want to build a sustainable future. There has to be a collaborative approach between business and government, and at the heart of that, there has to be an environment of certainty. That's how we'll secure investment. That's how we'll secure jobs. And most important, how we will secure a sustainable future. So I today want to implore the government to rethink, go back and pay heed to those saying stop. Stop destroying investor confidence, stop the uncertainty, and start supporting a sustainable energy market and future. Here, here. Well